This week on Comedy Hype News, CJ and Sade talk with comedian Rob Stapleton. They talk about his upcoming independent film, The Stuff. Stapleton also goes into depth about the process of getting a movie made, shares a story about Charlie Murphy, and tells us about his beef with Tracy Morgan. We have Mr. Rob Stapleton! Oh, 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 oh. Let's do the corona, let's do the corona. corona. Nice elbows, yeah. elbows. Elbows, hold elbows. on, hold on, wipe the cup. <laughs> thank you so much for coming through. No, thank you guys for having me. I see you guys doing your thing. All right, so I see what you've been working on lately. You have a new movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Stuff. The Stuff, yeah. Tell independent film that I did. So for those who haven't seen the trailer, what, what exactly is the movie about? Okay, the, the, the stuff is, I hate, I hate when, okay, let me, I don't mean to throw nobody under the bus, but I hate when we get a chance to make a movie mm -hmm. and we do some fucked up shit and mm -hmm. then we try to blame it on something else. All right, you know what I mean? I mean, you ever watch a movie in the first seven minutes, you don't want to see no more? Yeah. You you just know what's gonna happen every ten or fifteen minutes. You go, he gonna die, he gonna be funny. Right. That comic's very gonna try to be funny. It is very predictable. I'm one of the movie where you didn't have all of that. So the movie's about two guys, two unexpected charismatic guys, cross paths with these crooked cops, and these cops own the, they owe the Irish mob a quarter million. So they they have a arrangement to get this money from these uh, drug lords and these uh two charismatic guys get this bag that the cops are looking for. So now these guys are involved and then everything just spirals out of control. You don't know what's gonna happen next. So, you know, I have a, it's, it's sort of like training day meets Friday with a mm -hmm. touch of Uptown Saturday night. I love it. It's you know, okay. so when I say that Uptown Saturday night, the dope part about it, if you guys ever seen it, everybody made appearances in it. Flip mm -hmm. Wilson, R Richard Pryor. Mm -hmm. It was just different people coming through. And in this movie, I got like Charlie Baltimore coming through. And I got Danny Garcia, like the, the, the number five boxer in the world, making his movie premiere. And it's off the chain. Like, as soon as he finishes boxing, this is his world that he's going to be able to do. I, when, when people stood up and gave me two standing ovations, it just really lets me know, like, wow, we really on to something here. So, you know, it was dope really... to see uh, Melissa Ford. Yeah, exactly. In her Melissa. And, and that was right before Melissa, God bless you, sis. Love you, Melissa. She came through, was, was dope on set. And, and then right after that, she had an accident, that, like, you know, not too mm -hmm. long after that, you mm -hmm. know, made a great recovery because that's the superstar that she is. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Melissa was dope in it. Um, you got my man, Al Thompson. Al Thompson is one of those actors that you know, but you may not remember everything that he's in. He's actually shooting a movie in New Mexico right now with Idris Elba and, and Wesley Snipes. Mm. Uh, it's like a black cowboy movie that they're doing. So, you know, oh, his wow. profile is like going, getting crazy. But I found out these are the three hardest things in a movie, getting somebody to read your script, Nobody wants to read your original script. They don't give a fuck about it. The next thing is getting money to shoot your get shooter from. People don't give a fuck. Unless you have Will Smith in your movie, mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't care about putting money in. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. But once, what two people do invest in is you. People that really fuck with me end up giving me money because of me. They're like, yo, Rob, I don't care who you got in it or what, I, I, I'm supporting you. I'm gonna cut this check for you, here's 10,000, here's whatever, boom, do that. Then the third thing is after the movie's done, getting somebody to watch it. Mm. Because after the movie's done, they don't believe that you really did a movie, and then they don't really wanna watch it, so they'll keep pushing it off. Then when they do see it, they go, yo, this shit is incredible. Mm -hmm. What the fuck I was telling you? <laughs> what you think I was yeah. gonna tell you? Right. You know what I mean? So that's that's the game, what this is. You know do you I mean? think that was a particular movie or, or something that's obvious, like a movie that kind of did mess up the independent game? In which terms which of movie? The I'm asking you, is there one that you see? Oh, oh you is going, there a particular this movie? Is trash, but you know, it has this great marketing behind it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it 120, all right? And, and I'll say this. Master P movies. I respect Master P for his hustle with what he did with music. He came from nothing, did it, tried to give, and this, I'm not throwing him under the bus because I don't oh, know him personally, but if I, I didn't meet him in person, I'm not going to run. I'm not going to change up what I said in person. But my thing is, and, and I honor him for this, he's given brothers a chance. Absolutely. Yeah. He's given brothers work, so yeah. I can't hate on that. But it's the work that you're presenting that right. you're doing. It's still the same shit that you did 15, 20 years ago with the first I got the hookup. Your mm -hmm. second one should be almost be able to be nominated for something because of the development of where you are now. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that I'm better than nobody, but I just expect more from us. Now you did mention uh, Charlie Murphy, and he was affiliated was with the stuff. How, how was he affiliated with Well, Charlie was supposed to be in the movie. And, okay. and then when Charlie was sick, you know, 
he had his right. They didn't, he didn't really let everybody know how sick he was when he was sick. So when I had him in the movie, he was kept pushing it off. And I was wondering why he kept pushing it off and wouldn't, um, you know, take the booking. And I realized what he was going through, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I, I was kind of mad at the point that he didn't really say what it was. But when you're going through that, it's a personal thing and you act accordingly to how you feel about that. Who am I to be mad about? He's the one that's sick, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's the reason. So I got Gary Sturgis. Uh, to play uh, the role that he did in in the scene with Charlie Baltimore, which is which is crazy. Y'all you know Gary from a lot of Tyler Perry movies. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, he's he's a dope dude, man. That dude was dope. He was on set. It was it was no diva, nothing. It was, it was crazy. Now I know you had some differences with Tracy Morgan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. I mean, Tracy, I love Tracy. Mm -hmm. Tracy's my dude. You know what I mean? I just you know literally when I was going through the movie. Like, I'll say this, and some viewers might see this and say, this dude is talking about this shit like he Martin Scors Scorsese or something. Mm -hmm. It's just when you do a movie like this, you put your blood, sweat, and tears in it, mm -hmm. and then you guys are going to really say what you really feel about it. But Tracy is my dog. He was my man. And I was li really in the trenches when I did my Breakfast Club interview, and I brought it up, and it was the truth. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Tracy had called me about, and I'll keep it honest, we're really with what it is. Tracy had wanted to do the movie, and called me about it. It's not like I was pushing it to him. And we, unfortunately, he got into the accident. You know, the accident happened, my man Jimmy Mack died. And um, I went and did the movie like a year later. You know what I mean? Tracy had to recover. And I brought the movie back to him. Uh, still, I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. Brought the movie back to him and say, yo, you want to do the puffy and just hit a button and executive produce this and say to you, executive produce this movie. and still get a check from it and yeah, walk you through it to a deal. Door. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, I didn't want a, do, a dime from him. You know, I know everybody's approaching him. Yo, Trey, I'm, I'm in the studio. Yo, I'm rapping now. Could you help me with all this? Mm -hmm. I didn't want a dollar. I just wanted to um, him to be part of something that we talked about doing. You had me talk to your manager about it, and he didn't even want to see the film. It's just hard when you're in the trenches right now. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what I get mad? In a sports game, right? Mm -hmm. Basketball team just loses, or football team, you lose, you came back, it was down by 20, you came back, took the lead. Other team kicks a field goal with three seconds on the clock. And then you're in a locker room and you're mad and you're upset that you fumbled. And then a, uh, the reporter puts the thing right in your face. Mm -hmm. And you're upset. At that moment, you need a time to go like, you know, to be with your teammates to talk. So how do you feel that you fumbled the third game in a row? You're like, bitch, blah, blah, blah. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you and then later on when he goes home and he looks at ESPN, he said, damn, I, I should have handled that different. Yeah. Like, I didn't have to do that. Like, I got past it. I was wrong. He was wrong too. He didn't have to bring, but I didn't have to unleash on this motherfucker like that, yeah. you know? And I call that maturity. That's what it is. It's maturity yeah. and growth in this shit. You know what I mean? There is one thing that I, I do kind of, I just, for my clarification, mm -hmm. um, he did say that, uh, responded to when you say you wrote for him. Mm -hmm. And he said that wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, that was that was another lot. <laughs> that was another okay, lot. I wrote for like, him. Was, was it, like, you, did you write for him? Or? Yeah, and, and you know, the thing, the truth is, and you can YouTube this shit. Anything yeah. I say, you can YouTube. You don't want nobody to be like, oh, this nigga lying because he's trying to make a name for himself. Right. I've made a name for myself. Right. I'm just not the most famous comic that's out here. You know what I mean? But um, I wrote for him. Tracy, me and Tracy did a show called The Uptown Comedy Club. And I don't want to make this whole thing about Tracy, but right. I'm, I'm going to give y'all, you know, in the public a little bit of what they want. Is, I was on this show called the Uptown Comic Clubs. Me, Tracy, Flex Alexander, Jim Brewer, who ended up going on Saturday Night Live, Deborah Wilson ended up going on Mad TV, Arsenal and Mitchell. It was a great cast of people, mm. and they went on to do things. And I wrote the Biscuit character for him. It was a character called mm -hmm. Biscuit, because Tracy was really, really big back then. Mm -hmm. And he was Biscuit away from 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I wrote sketches on it. Then later on, he was blessed. Martin grabbed him up and put him on seeing that Biscuit character, put him on Martin's show, which became a hustle man. I had nothing to do with that. Like, I didn't write none of that shit. But he saw this dude was untapped thing. Let me jump onto him. That led to later on him getting an audition to Saturday Night Live. And the thing, if anybody is on Saturday Night Live knows that when you're on there, you're in the factory, you got to produce on Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. Half of the thing is going through the audition and getting picked. But when you're in that fucking room and you're a cast member, you have to fight to get your shit on the air. Like, no one's not going to get that Eddie Murphy shit again. Being a black young dude, 19 years old, and, and, and the public's demanding for you to be on every sketch every week. Mm -hmm. People like Will Farrell, when they were on that show, the writers want to stay on another season, another season, so you write all your sketches for that person. Mm. 
because you, if you write it for him, that's going to air. And you as a writer, people ask, who wrote that sketch? Mm, so okay. your name, so Adam McKay, if you ever see any movie that he does, there's a dude named Adam McKay that became his partner. So they do all of those movies that they, Teledanga Nights, whatever that movie, you know, all of those movies, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's Will Ferrell, Adam McKay, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And that comes from Saturday Night Live. So wow. me, me, JB Smooth, all of us, Finesse Mitchell, we all auditioned for it. Finesse ended up getting it. Uh, JB did the smart thing. JB went in and took the writer job. Mm. Uh, I wish I would have done that. JB did the writer job, ended up meeting Larry David from there. Boom, curb your enthusiasm. You know what I mean? It's all about networking. You can either complain in this business and be a bitch ass, or you make net, or you or you network and make connections and people that can elevate you. You know yeah. what I mean? So I wrote sketches for when Tracy was on there. It's, I didn't know how hard it is. So Tracy used to come to me on Monday and Tuesdays and be like, "Yo, Rob, man, yo, you, the shit that you did for me, like on on, on set on a uh, living on, on Uptown Comedy Club, what what shit can you do?" And I was like, I would see like his hair was falling out. Like I never saw like a black man in like circles in your hair from the stress from being in there. Like we, we had to audition sketches for um, Uptown Comedy Club, but it wasn't as, it wasn't like Lauren Michaels was there. That's okay. different with that. That's Jesus of NBC okay. sitting right there, okay. you know, and, and, and you know, all, all of that. So I wrote some stuff for him and it aired. And they even used my name. I, like I wrote a sketch with him and Samuel Jackson when, uh, when they won. Remember when you win the big lottery and they bring that big check to you? Uh -huh. And they brought the big check to the, to the house and the name on the check says the Stapletons. You know what I mean? That was a representation because they couldn't have me on as a writer on the show because I wasn't signed to be with the show. Uh -huh. I was just suggesting things for him to pitch that can make it. You know what I mean? And that was an ode to me. They put the Stapletons on, on, that, on that check. You know what I mean? And I um, wrote another one about uh, Tito Jackson about, uh, uh, about coming out with an album because Michael died and they still need to eat. So he don't really have, he can't really <laughs> sing. So it's a whole bunch of bass lines that Tito Jackson right. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote a, a lot of different joints that, that made the show. And so I, I say all of that to say that I just figured with us having that history that it would be nothing for me to come to you and say, of course. hey, let, let's, let's, you know, and, and it, it didn't work that way. You know what I mean? It just makes you sit back and go, oh shit, okay. That's why I said, when we see each other, it'll be good. We meet him catch up, it'll be dope. All right, well, the stuff, it is, uh, what is coming out this spring? Yeah, right? it'll be out this spring, late summer. It'll, it'll definitely be out, man, this, uh, the stuff. Make sure y'all come out, support that. It's gonna be dope. For sure. uh, streaming deal, I got a streaming deal uh, with it that we're closing out with it, so it's not gonna be in the movies. It's one of those movies that don't need to be in the movies. It should, if, if black if it ain't Black Panther, people don't wanna go see shit no more. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> well, we used to streaming stuff. Out? Streaming is the shit now. Yeah. I remember 10 years ago, I would've thought I failed if I had a streaming deal. Now I'm like, that's the way <laughs> well, to go. I was about to say you got a streaming deal for yeah, the movie. Yeah, that's, streaming that's deal is the, is the way to go now. People want to see these shits on their phone, their tablets, or just connect it through smartphones and all that. Yeah. Which network? Um, you can't tell us. We'll, we'll talk, we'll talk, yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to get that. Yeah, I know, you see, you talked to her. She did like this. What network? What network? I put her eyes and everything. I gazed at her, whatever. All right, make sure y'all catch the stuff that's premiering this spring. Rob Stapleton, thank you for stopping Thank you guys so much for having me. Yes. I'll definitely be back. Thank you if y'all have me so back. Good. I appreciate it. Yeah, we would love thank to you. have you back. We got to get you and Pierre on at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's my dude. Yeah. yeah. Big shout out to P. What up, man? All right, guys. That's CJ and Sade with Comedy Hype News.